Thank you. And I, I want to say this is the best conference I've been, in, been to in a long time. And the great thing is that I don't have to listen to myself because I'm on this side of the stage. But uh, I feel like in, a, in a, an event like this that uh, you guys should be up here and we should be down there because the conversations that I've heard around the, around the uh, sessions that when we go out for lunch or meet in the, in the, meet in the snow um, have been really great. And I thank you for coming and I thank you. Uh, for being invited. That was fantastic that, that I, I got to come here. So, and do, Dr. Heller. <laughs> Dr. Heller is a genius, and uh, we did work together. Uh, maybe we'll get to talk about that later. But the, I, I kind of morphed uh, from just pages to reading in general because um, – I am an old-fashioned designer, actually. I never was an avant-garde designer. I was much more of a traditional designer. And as a typographer, it's about reading. The, the key thing for typography is to tell the story, to get the words into the reader's mind. And this is something that we're having a lot of trouble with. Uh, the, the visual content was so well taken care of uh, by Stephen and by others in the last two days that I'm not worrying about visual content right now. I'm going to worry about typography and, and the whole idea about uh, where we're coming from and where we're going. Um, and, and it's widely believed that reading is in decline, that, uh, that we've lost our attention span, um, and that there's a different relationship that, that people have with a publication in a digital form than they used to with print. Obviously, there's physical differences, but I don't think reading and writing, which I think is the most efficient form of human communication, uh, particularly for large numbers of people, is, is, is actually going away. Uh, Richard Gingras, who's, who's a friend of mine, uh, we work together at At Home Network, said um, that the difference between digital and, and traditional media or, or publications is that uh, in the in the uh, traditional, you're telling the story, there is a narrative that you're trying to get across. And in uh, digital, the story is in the mind of the user. Um, and we see this behavior only increasing, where people are grabbing little bits of information from wherever and putting it together to form their own story. Um, so it all, it all started with the web, with, with hypertext. And I, I found this you may, have, you may know this from the, uh, the old hotwired.com, which was Wired's uh, early website, 1995, 1996. This was the very first uh, banner ad. So this is essentially the beginning of the end. You can blame the American phone company, AT&T. And uh, they had a horribly prophetic headline. Have you, uh, have you ever clicked your mouse right here? You will. And we didn't stop. I mean, we've just been clicking and clicking and clicking, and the, the whole business model of the web uh, became about clicking. It, it, became, uh, it, it, it became the notion of page views. Um, and part of the whole business failure of, of digital publications has been our insistence in, in, in the early days of following the broadcast, the radio uh, and, and, and television model of free, of free content, uh, no subscription cost, uh, not counting the cost of having an internet connection, uh, but uh, relying upon vast numbers of people, but a bigger audience, in order to, to drive advertising. And it, the clear winner in all of this is Google. There is not very many publications have been, have been that successful online. So what, what's going on? I, I did, a, in research, I found this uh, from a, through Google, uh, 12 best news and reading apps in the world. Okay. And so I just started scrolling down. Uh, and it's, you know, there's a lot of other stuff going on on the side. Uh, there's, some, there's Hitler there. I don't know if you saw him. Uh, the, it's like, what the, what is going on here? And, it, you know, it's kind of unsettling. So oddly enough, there's other ways of, of that this publication is, 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 is giving you Information. So I, I clicked on one of the links, and I got, uh, I got this kind of interesting set of productivity apps and other kinds of apps. This is a, a different story, the 100 
greatest apps. And so I said, oh, yeah, that's interesting. And I clicked and then, wait, I'm at n number two of 111? And each time it's going to like change ads on me so that they can count me as another, as another page view. So I kind of like, oh, I give up. So I left. Um, it's no real surprise that people aren't reading much. I did in my research for this talk, I, I found that a, a, a common uh, session time per page is about 20 seconds, 25 seconds. And considering how, how many words are on a lot of pages, that's probably not enough to actually read stuff. Um, the, we're, we're, we're beset with really horrible advertising, uh, and a lot of it, because they, have, they put, you know, the, uh, the, the ad guy at the new publication I'm working on in Hong Kong, I said, so what kind of um, web ads do you want to sell for the website? And he, he came in with a list of basically any kind of ad that anyone could come up with. You know, 20 different sizes, uh, sizes and shapes and, and different kinds of special effects. It's like, oh, no. And that's basically what it is. The ad salesman goes in, and uh, the, this, the customer says, well, what do you got? And, and he says, what do you want? And that, that they will take any ad and put it anywhere, and they all over, and they start blinking. Um, the design is really pushed against reading. We saw that in, the, in the, uh, that, that uh, business site, where uh, they want to get more page views, so they keep trying to push you along. Um, it's very hard to find the rest of a publication. There's no real feeling of immersion or experiential uh, session with the, with the publication. You're there because you came from a, a link in Facebook or, or Twitter or from a Google search, and you found something, and you click in, and you find that one thing, and you're there for your 20 seconds, and you're gone. So uh, you never really look at the next story. However, I don't think it's true that no one's reading. Um, the, the, uh, we, we like stories. Human beings like stories. And human nature is not changing that fast. I mean, I keep running into people who think that the culture has morphed or that human nature is, uh, it, it is changing very rapidly. It doesn't change that rapidly. The culture does eventually change, but I think it's a generational thing. And we clearly, if we have 20, 20 years of... of or, uh, of the of the web, with this kind of design, uh, you will force people from reading away from reading that way. But they're doing uh, they're doing lots of other kinds of reading and writing. Um, and the one real indication is the is email or the or the text messages, uh, which come in twenty different ways. I mean, you get you get them on what, WhatsApp, or you get them in Facebook Messenger, or, or text message SMS text, or uh, in Twitter or LinkedIn or wherever. Um, so that's replacing voicemail. Uh, and so, but it's more text. It's more, more actual reading and writing. It's just not narrative. So there are other big indications that narrative isn't over, though. If reading and writing still exists, the, the book is, it, while the, the, the publishing model or the business model for, book, uh, for books is just as as stressed out as, as magazines and newspapers. Um, the book is still here, and we see it in Amazon. Um, but the form of the book is, is something I, I, I sort of like always to go back to. Think about, okay, this is 500 years we've had these things in print, printed versions. Uh, there were, there were uh, codices before, handwritten uh, calligraphy uh, codex uh, from before that. Um, at some point, we gave up the scroll. We decided the scroll was a cumbersome thing to carry around, and a book was much more portable. Uh, and we could print them up. Uh, I always liked the idea that, that Columbus's uh, account of the New World, which came out in uh, 14, uh, 1494, I think, or late, or late 1493, sold in the first five years, sold 90,000 copies in Europe. And that's only, th you know, 40 years after Gutenberg. I mean, so we're not talking about, I mean, this, that was new technology, and it was already turning into mass. Uh, the nice thing about books is that I don't think anybody ever had to explain to me uh, how to use a book. I mean, they, I had to learn how to read, of course, but uh, kids find no problem with books. Uh, they, they pick them up and figure them out very quickly, and the, 
The book has a very simple UI, very simple user interface, and you, you essentially go down the page and then you turn the page. It's not that hard. And then after you've t t you turn the page, you go through a series of pages. So you get this, this linear scheme that's, that's pretty much the, the verbal form. You, you, you are able to follow the story. And when e-books came out and we had the Sony reader, uh, they followed that very simple principle, uh, page the, t con uh, the content, and then run it in, in a series. Now, it was single pages. It wasn't spreads. So here's the first Kindle. Um, the typography is horrible, uh, but it's certainly no worse than most badly printed paperbacks. And if you start reading a good book on a Kindle, uh, and here's a, a current Kindle, run as, this is the uh, iPad app, and, and, and we know that it, with Amazon, you have, they, they were adaptive uh, in the design very early, uh, responsive, we would say now, but, but they, they make the apps for all these different screen sizes. Um, and this is one that I'm reading right now. I must say that I'm not, I'm farther than 1% through, but it's a pretty, pretty long book. And it's the ki kind of book that uh, I find if I start reading it, I... It's, I only have maybe 20 minutes before falling asleep. <laughs> so it's really good on the airplane uh, or for when you're lying in bed and you can't sleep. Uh, so here's the, a very nice, uh, probably just a, a, a JPEG of the, of the title page from the printed book. Uh, the contents page, not so nice. Uh, but it works. It links to, you know what these are. These are links because they're blue and they're underlined. But... Um, it links to the, to this, to the uh, chapters, which, once again, recall the printed book a little bit. And then you just start reading, and you read, and you read, and everything's fine. So here's something that's sort of standing completely the opposite of web design. Uh, it's, it's following a very old form. It's very linear on one level. McLuhan probably wouldn't like it much. Uh, Amazon loves it. It's done very well for them. And uh, the, the, the writers in, in, that I know are very happy to have that, that form of distribution. It's, it's continuing. Now, uh, the world continues to morph, but why couldn't we use this form for publications? Why, why have we given up on that? And I'm, I, it took us a while. I mean, I don't think we've totally given up. I, don't, I just don't think we know why. So I'm going to first show you the, one of my first efforts uh, I was in, uh, brought in by Microsoft to help on a New York Times reader. This is not actually my design, but this was the, the, and, and, uh, the first version of the New York Times reader, which ran on Windows, and uh, it was responsive design. So you could resize the window, and the, the layout would adjust. So this was algorithmic layout. And, and when I was first talk, talking to Boris about the the... All, uh, what I meant by beyond reading, I mean beyond pages, uh, it's a question of you have to think about basic typographical relationships. The, the section header the, in, in the contents page, the, 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 uh, head, the main headlines, the hierarchy, the headlines and stories, the pictures and captions, how do all those connect? And, you know, in a typical book or a magazine, we have style sheets for each of the different levels there. Uh, but that's really what you're, you're designing. And then you make a number of rules or algorithms for the relationships. How, if, if this, then that, and, and different kinds of screen sizes. Uh, so this was fun for me. We did one in, in Germany using the, the, an HTML version of the, this idea that Philippe Forte, 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 uh, uh, Fortes, uh, design, um, and it was for view. Uh, we couldn't figure out what to do with a spread cover, so we just kind of ran another picture. But, uh, and then we did in New York, uh, Nomad Editions. This is not running in, in, in Microsoft. This is running on TreeSaver, which was a, a JavaScript framework. And the same thing. Here it is on an iPad, but it was uh, automatically re, uh, adaptive. Um, they never made a success of this, but I think the design was beginning 
uh, to be interesting. There is another one, Sporting News, uh, that we did um, that had lots of, lots of interesting pictures because it was sports. A very simple uh, text uh, regimentation. Now, it, it worked completely responsive on the web. Most people thought it was an iPad app because it was sold through the uh, App Store. But in fact, you, can, you could get it uh, on the web um, and it would work on any, any size device. Um, so what happened? The Tree Saber was an interesting project. We never invested a lot of money in it. We, we never really got that far with it. It was, it was uh, we had, eh, we had Nomad, I guess, was our biggest customer. But um, at that moment in time, the publishers all got excited by just forcing their InDesign pages into a PDF and then sticking them on the iPad. The iPad had come out. Everyone was trying to figure out, how can we get our magazines on the iPad? And basically, this is like a nice uh, appetizer that you've covered in aspic. It's, you know, maybe it lasts longer. Uh, it never tastes fresh. It's not really the food that you wanted. Uh, it's a picture of a magazine. And here's a current one. This is New York, a brilliantly designed magazine uh, in, in aspic. Uh, run through the Adobe digital publishing system, which I call, it was DPS, I call it the Department of Public Safety. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's all works pretty good, but if you've designed a magazine for print and you have a, a spread, uh, what do you do? You have two iPads. <laughs> that might work. So, uh, and it's also fine on a big iPad, but not so good on the mini. So you can't read it. So you have to scale it up, and then, then you're back to scrolling. Um, there is a, a nice uh, index that they put in. So dealing with, it, it, well, okay, while all this is happening, the kind of, the other big form of published content that was taking over was the blog. Uh, blogs were everywhere, everybody could do blogs. There was WordPress and other, other ways of getting blogs published nicely and easily. Uh, it was a column, a column of text. And so uh, some people started saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to deal with vertical scrolling. Uh, the, paging, the paging wasn't happening. So a very simple one would be you'd, you'd vertically scroll the index, but then you could page the stories. And the best example of this is The Economist, which has had this style now for several years. Um, it works fine. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I don't know what they do for Android, uh, and I don't, I, I've never tried using it on the, on the phone. I read it on the iPad, and it's nice. Um, it works very simply, store, you know, just like a magazine, page to page, and their content works pretty easily this way. Now, another version of this is the kind of uh, scroll and swipe, where you're scrolling for um, the index, and then you're also scrolling for the pages. And an example of this would be the New York Times iPad app or, or their iPhone app, um, which is nice because it has the, has the fonts now. Uh, this is from yesterday. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, you, 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 uh, you click on the story and you get you get it. Uh, you get the, the story page, and you then can can scroll to read more, or you just swipe to get to the next page. Now, what's nice about that is that there is some kind of immersion. If you're really interested in today's news, you can scroll through the, the page. There's a, a hamburger. You don't see it on here in the upper left, where you can uh, get an index. Uh, I don't think it works from from every page, but you can get an index and then go to opinion or other sections. Uh, persisting, though, and the kind of the kind of winner in the current battle is is just the big block, um, and some of them are boring as all hell. They're just columns of text. It's like getting a galley of type instead of actually a magazine. But some of them are beautifully done. Here is high high, which is uh, high high dot co is, is where it is is a um, is a self published mechanism. It's sort of like Super Twitter. You get to put a uh, you, you start with a picture and then you write whatever you want, and you post it, and it looks very nice. Um, it scrolls, 
and it kind of scrolls uh, forever. So you just scroll and read. And in a simple situation like that, it's nice. It's very, uh, very easy to take. And, uh, and then you're done. And then it gives you a couple of other options at the end. So there is a little attempt at immersion. Um, so I, then people started, in the last two years, I'd say, trying to make the blog more interesting. So it's a vertical scrolling form. And um, the best example in the U.S. is Vox, Vox Vox.com, which is from Vox Media. Uh, It's it's their most recent product. It's actually very similar to, in structure and code to uh, Sports Blog Nation, which is their first one. Uh, They added a card element, which I won't get into, but basically it's the same thing. You, You start scrolling. But there's a lot of other stuff that happens in the story flow uh, that, that you, well, this is actually the index page. So you, then it works like a blog. And here's an actual story. So uh, the same thing. You get, but they're not just running that galley of type. Uh, it starts out with some, some little uh, pointillistic summaries, and then there's sidebars of other things, the most read stuff. There's a hideous ad which seems to have been placed by Google in German because uh, I got it here. And then uh, you start scrolling and you'll find different headlines appearing uh, and some things marked out, pull quotes, more pictures, captions. Uh, and in some, some of the stories, they'll actually vary the widths of the text, then finally adds and then you're done. So it's endless, but it works. So I did one like this, and you can see it at the Font Bureau uh, in a kind of attenuated version uh, at the Font Bureau site. And it's, um, uh, you know, my question for you, for us, is really, is this the answer? You know, I don't know how we're going to get back to paging in digital publication, but w- I don't think we're quite there in immersion. The interesting thing is that you can, like Vox.com, you can indicate adjacency. I mean, what I'd probably do is JavaScript so that on the web page or if it was in, in, uh, encapsulated in, a, in an app, uh, I always have the next story as a swipe left or right, the ne- uh, next or previous. Um, so this is what the, oh, this one looks like. And this is a, uh, a thing we did for David Burlow when he got the Type Directors Club Award. So it's got different components. There's video stuck right into it. There's a big specimen, and that works very nicely as a scroll. Um, and then more text and then other, other articles uh, about David. So it's kind of nice. Is it the answer? I don't know. And I'm working on now in Hong Kong a new publication called Le Pen, which is uh, the first uh, is a wine magazine, the luxury high-end fine wine magazine, um, where we're actually assigning a lot of photographs, we're assigning a lot of writing. Uh, it's like the old days. Uh, I'm actually art directing. Huh. Thought, uh, almost nobody gets to do that anymore, where you call people up and send them in- to interesting places. Of course, they get in this case, they get to drink a lot of good wine. And you pay them money. It's, uh, it's a historical concept. Um, but it would be, so I'm sort of using this talk as a brief. And what I'd like to pose to you, is, as many, many of us are publication designers here, what is the... What's the new paradigm? What's the new model? What's the new template? If we, if we can vary it enough, if, but keep the reading intact, I believe that we can, we can create digital publications that are, uh, that are immersive, that people like to spend time with, that they can have fun with. Uh, so immersion is the number one <coughs> step. And then we have to figure out how to move from page to page. Uh, we need to promote the rest of the magazine uh, let people know that they're in a whole context and not just on one article, uh, particularly since many people will arrive just on one for, because they're going to one article. And that's, that's, a, that's a design problem. The, the biggest problem, of course, is the business model. And as we've discovered, very few small circulation blogs or websites uh, make much money. Uh, the subs- people don't seem to want to pay subscriptions for them. 
uh, in places like the New York Times, it's still the most of the revenue is coming from the print side, both advertising and, and circulation. However, they they have created the principle at the Times that you have to pay for it. Many other publications in the news area have followed. I think we've got to do something like that. A year ago, everyone was saying it's going to be all about native advertising, that we're going to be able to, or, or that or branded content, or however you want to describe advertorials, as we used to say in print. Uh, no, one's made, no one's made that case yet. A lot of readers are furious because they, they think they're reading something and it's just a shill for an advertiser. Um, that, but it looks like it's content from the same publication. That, that's not cool. However, I think that sponsorship of some kind is going to be more effective long term than, than web advertising. The, the, the currency is just too devalued, and Google is racking up the, the real money. Um, and then the distribution is also an issue. I mean, with the iPad and the, and the proliferation of Android tablets and, and the, the phablets, the big phones, we have one in. The, actually, the company that I'm working for that's a, that's a seven inch uh, for Huawei that they designed that's um, actually at that point, who needs an iPad mini? You might as well just carry this thing around with you. Um, it, in, in the, with, with the proliferation of these, these, um, these different devices, we, we have pushed a little bit away from apps. Uh, it's become too many screen sizes, too many apps to have to make. And we're beginning to see the reemergence of web, the reading, uh, having a responsive site it, that works in the browser on all these devices. And that's, uh, that I think is probably it. At the same time, you, if you have customers or readers uh, who want their app, then you've got to make them an app. So we'll do both. Um, so that's, those, this is my brief. I would be delighted to hear back from you about what, you th what you're thinking. It, in June, you'll get it, or certainly by fall, you'll see what we're doing. Um, if you follow it, uh, it uh, the, follow my uh, Twitter at Roger Black, uh, you can you can probably get keep a keep abreast of that. But uh, I want to thank you again for coming, and thank you very much for inviting me here. <laughs>